What's up, family? Hey, hey, what's hey. going on? Hope you're doing well, having a good week so far. Hey, y'all see what's happening right here. It's a family affair right here. Ooh, oh, my goodness gracious. Come on up here, boy. What are you doing? Come on up here. <laughs> hey, so you see we have a family affair. Got our grandsons over here with us. Two of our grandsons here. Tell them who your name is. Tell them your name. Because what's your name? Michael. All right, yeah. So, yeah, we out here hanging out here doing what we do. So, it's another week. We're just thankful to be here. All right, y'all go finish eating. Go ahead, finish eating. Go ahead, go finish eating. Yeah, y'all go in there, finish eating. All right, <laughs> so yeah. Um, hope y'all doing well. Hopefully, uh, everything going on here. Yeah, we get that right. All right, so let's do what we always do. All right, ready on the count of three. Uh, I want to make sure this is right. Yeah, my boy's right there with me. So there we go. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Ready? Count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. There we go. So, yeah. So, um, we're back here another week. You can see, got my queen right here with me, the doctor, Dr. Deborah. So, um, yeah, we're just here to talk one more week about uh, Solomon and continuing on, uh, you know, reading through uh, First Kings. Uh, last week we were in uh, First Kings chapter four, and guess where we're going to be at this week? Chapter four, <laughs> because I heard something that I really want to. Um, um, you know, dive a little deeper into on chapter four. And, um, you know, hopefully what, what, what we'll talk about tonight will be a blessing to you. And hopefully you see yourself in this. Uh, if you remember last week, we, we simply said, I mean, we all are, are destined to be, you know, we call to be kings and queens, right? We all, we're destined and, and called to do great things. And, um, you know, but with that means uh, there are some things we're going to have to do. We got to make some decisions. We got to make some calls. We got to make some choices um to be who we are called to be and we're called to be leaders we're called to be kings and queens right so um we got to start to think like that we got to start to 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 not only just act like that we got to think like that dude that actions and our thoughts and our, our our moves and the and the and the conversations that we have need to be geared around to where we are trying to get to right now we're always going to be in some way, shape or form, searching and, and looking to be something right, because we always evolving, always, um, you know, trying to be better than we already are. Right. And so with that comes, um, you know, opportunity to uh, learn different things, to 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 put ourselves in different positions, uh, surround ourselves with, with different people so that we can start to shape uh, this mindset that we have in the way that we need to be and we need to go. So uh, we want to dive a little bit deeper into chapter four today. And I want to share a few things that I've felt like, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always a little slow to say God gave it to me because, you know, but I believe it is inspired by him. But some of these things I'm going to talk about, right, it's nothing, I can't say it's something that I came up with as original, you know, but it's something that I got reminded of. And um, did you have something you want to say, baby? You want to get no, no. Go okay. Go uh, anything you want to say about last week or chapter, chapter four? Or, no. Uh, okay. So, um, you know, um, yeah. And and with, with with chapter four, you know, we have in here where Solomon was really just setting up shop. He was setting up shop. Now, there's one thing I do want to say. I'm going to get off offline for a quick second. But if you remember in chapter four. Uh, we talked about the district governors, right? With the district uh, leaders, with, with the district governors, mm -hmm. right? And he had 12 district governors. So, so each one was responsible for uh, their district. And each month, uh, one of them was responsible for taking care of Solomon's palace and all of his horses and chariots and all of that, right? He had to, they had to supply for his palace, okay? Um, and I, if I spoke incorrectly last week, I apologize. Because uh, I think I said that they were responsible for all of Israel, and 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 if I said that, I apologize. I won't. I don't want to speak in error. I definitely don't want to say anything wrong about God's word, right? And so, but it's, it does say 
where they were responsible. And matter of fact, I'll read it to you. The district governors faithfully provided food for King Solomon and his court. Each made sure nothing was lacking during the month assigned to him. They also bought the necessary barley and straw for the royal horses in the stables. OK, so I just want to make sure that I get that clear that I don't want to. I think I might have mentioned last week that they were responsible for all of Israel. And that's really not the case. Um, but read it for yourself. And um, but but it was a high time. It was a great time to be um, in, in Israel at this time because there was peace. OK. And there was plenty to eat. There was plenty for everybody. Right. And uh, and it even said um, I read a little bit more, it said um, and from Dan to the north of north to Beersheba in the south, each family had its own home and got garden. Right. So, you know, it was plenty going on in Israel right now. OK. And so um, but what that got me again, I just wanted to clarify that and make sure that I wasn't speaking an error. And if I did on last week, I truly apologize. Uh, but that's why I always tell you, go read it for yourself. Do not, do not uh, hang what I say as the gospel when you can read it for yourself. And that hopefully you learn something. If you ain't learned nothing else tonight, learn that, that you got to go read it for yourself. Don't assume that that pastor on TV or the one that's in the pulpit at your local church or the church that you visited or the person that you was listening to on YouTube last week. Please do not assume that they giving you the un- Un, un, what's, oh God, they're giving you truth. OK, you got to make sure they're giving you truth from this Bible right here. So that's why you got to read it for yourself to make sure that they are giving you truth out of here and not what they want to say. OK, because they'll take the word and flip it to make you feel a certain way so that they can pimp you. OK, but that's another conversation for another day. All right. I'm going to leave that alone. OK. So let's go to what we want to talk about today. You sure you ain't got nothing there? I'm sure. Okay, all right. So, but jump in as you always do. You already know. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I listed a few things because here's the thing. This is what I heard. We got to make boss moves. We got to start making boss moves. And I, I, I'm, I'm just going to say it. How we handle our personal lives affects our professional life. How we handle our professional life affects our personal life. Okay, and of course, my 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 my, my God, <laughs> my God, my, my <laughs> he got me all messed up. But anyway, my my little man up there handling the business. Okay, you okay? We got our grandkids here with us. We got our grandkids here. So if y'all hear some stuff in the background, you already know what's happening. But anyway, um, but we got to start making some boss moves. And and but how we handle our personal life affects and bleeds over to our professional life and vice versa. Okay. So even though you might not be the CEO of a business, you might not have a brick and mortar place, or you might not have a little small business on the side or whatever. You still got your business, your household, you got your life. That's your business. And you got to handle it because you're the CEO of your life. And so there are certain things you need to be doing to make sure that you're getting the most out of your life And that your life is also being a blessing to others because your life is not just for you, believe it or not. Sorry. But you are responsible for your life. okay? and so just make sure that you're beginning to think about the moves and the things that you're saying and and the actions that you're taking. Is that what you really want to be? That's going to be totally up to you. OK, but we need to start making some boss moves. And so what I thought about this week is that just thinking about being an effective and effective CEO. And I see to me, that's what I see right here happening in First Kings chapter four is 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 um, is Solomon becoming an effective CEO. He's not just doing things for himself. OK. And now I'm getting it to him. Let me let me just get to my list. Let me give you show you. I'm sure. OK, OK. <laughs> let me get to my list because I, 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 I've been feeling this thing all week and I, and I had to write it down because y'all know me. I get on here and I get hype and I get to talking and I mess around and forget to say something or whatever. But anyway, I made some notes to keep myself on task. But this is what I feel. Some things that that speaks to being an effective t- CEO. First thing right here has a vision for the present and the future. Now, y'all know how I feel about vision right there. Write the vision, make it plain. Those that are reading can run with it. Rebecca 2 and 2. That's one of our base um, uh, scriptures that we use right here for this segment on 630 on Thursdays. And so, but an effective CEO has a vision 
for where he's trying to take the company or trying to take his household or trying to whatever he is in charge of. He's looking or she is looking down the road. It's not just right now. It's not where we at right now. Where are we trying to go? What are we trying to build? What are we trying? What does the future look like? Okay. It starts with the vision. You got to see it first. Right. And so I can go on and on, but I'm going to keep going because the time's there. But if you want to. Oh, no, go ahead. (laughs) Number two. Understands they need others help and empowers them to do so. Now, we talked about that on last week. I'm going to say that one more time. Uh, An effective CEO understands they need others help and empowers them to do so. And so we talked about that here in um, in 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 first Kings chapter four, talking about Solomon. okay, and he started putting people in place because he knew he could not take care of Israel by himself. That was impossible. And matter of fact, we talk about him having wisdom. Well, that's wisdom. So so start surrounding yourself with the people that you need to help your vision come to fruition. Right. And so that's what he started doing right here in chapter four, putting people in place that he needed. okay, to help him make sure Israel is not only Israel being taken care of, not only Israel being protected, but also that Israel can flourish and continue to be the great nation that is called to be. All right. Good. Yeah. Number three. An effective CEO doesn't make moves out of pure emotions. Now, this might be a struggle for some of us, okay? Because we all are human beings. We got emotions. We got feelings. Let somebody cross you the wrong way. Let somebody say something sideways to you right now. Vision might be gone for a minute because you go deal with that situation, right? Sometimes, you know, emotions gets us, no doubt about it. But an effective CEO, even though they understand they have emotions, OK, and they, they were given those emotions for a reason. OK, an effective CEO takes the time to make sure that they're not making moves out of emotion. Not saying that emotions might not have some play in it. OK, sometimes those emotions push you to make moves, make make changes or whatever. But an effective CEO is going to take the time to think it through. OK, and not respond or not do purely out of emotion. Makes sense so much. Mm-hmm. So Come on. Yeah. Well, one of the things I just wanted to remind you that Solomon, when he took um, became king, was mm-hmm. only about 19, 20 years old in that range. Mm-hmm. So uh, that puts it in perspective mm-hmm. um, his wisdom that he had even at that age. So he was a young buck, still had a lot to learn, but because of his relationship with God and 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 I gotta gotta say this again. Remember, I told y'all. Now I ain't tell you the word told you, but I just reminded you that David, his his father, spoke that over him. So you got to be mindful of the words that you're saying over your kids, okay? And not just your kids, anybody that you come in contact with. Be careful of the words you speak because David said that I believe, based upon what I read right here, that David planted that seed in Solomon. And at a young age, he recognized that through a dream that I need to be connected to God and through him and ask him for wisdom. Now he's ruler over Israel and has great wisdom where people, you talk about the age of 19 and 20, people coming and asking him questions at 19 and 20. How many folk are you seeking for wisdom at the age of 19 and 20 right about now? Yeah, let's keep moving. All right. Number four, an effective CEO Understands that not everyone will be along for the ride from beginning to end. Okay. And effectively, you understand that you're going to put Solomon put people in place, right? All kinds of places he put them in. And I'm sure there are probably some other people he appointed to different positions throughout the um, throughout the region, throughout Israel uh, or within his palace or whatever. You know, he put different that didn't mention in the Bible, but I'm sure he used some folk for for various things, right? That wasn't mentioned in the Bible, but Israel was built big. There was a lot going on. It's like taking care of a city, right? Taking care of a country, right? It was a country because you had different districts. So, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of people were used in a lot of different ways, right? But right here, he also understood that, okay, just because I hired you today, 
Just because I put you in place today don't mean that you're going to be the one that's going to be in that spot when it's time for me to get up out of here. Okay? There are going to be some turnover. There was some turnover. Just like on your job, there's turnover. I'm sure there was turnover in Israel in some of these positions as well. But as an effective CEO, you understand that, that that could happen. So you're always making sure that you're dotting the I's and crossing the T's as it relates to personnel, as it relates to the people that you put in place. Okay? Yeah. All right. Number five, an effective CEO. Uh, okay, I'm here. Okay, y'all get, bear with me. I'm sorry. But let's just say this not everyone will be in agreement with the decisions made and things communicated. Now, we can just go to your job right there. We can just stay right there on your job. Not my job, your job. We ain't going to talk about my job today. We're going to talk about your job. <laughs> but every last one of us, you know, we ain't even got to stay. We can just stay right at home. Let's just stay at home. Say. We ain't even got to go to job. Let's just stay right here at home. Okay? <laughs> Everybody ain't going to agree with the decisions that are made. Not everybody's going to agree with what was communicated or how it was communicated, when it was communicated, all of that, right? That's disagreements right in your own home, right? So understand that as a CEO, understand that sometimes that's going to happen. That comes with the territory, okay? But else you, but are you making these decisions based on your own emotion, your own feelings, or is it what's best for the house? Some for you to think about, some that to consider, right? Okay, let's keep going. All right. Um, an effective CEO has clear and effective communication. Okay. Now, this is something that I think we all have to continue to work on and develop. This is not, we ain't always hit the ball out the park every time. Okay. We all try to, hopefully, we're trying to communicate. We're trying to let folk know upfront what's going on. Everybody's in the know, everybody's fully understanding. Where we going? What's going on? You try to do that. Sometimes you're going to miss the mark. But an effective CEO always still tries to make sure that everybody knows what's going on so that there's nobody is no disillusion. Nobody uh, didn't understand. Nobody didn't know about it. OK, we got to communicate to try to eliminate the excuses. OK, try to eliminate as many excuses, as many opportunities. Now, you can't eliminate them all. OK, because as a leader, you're going to have some folk. They're going to give it a try. Trust and believe they're going to try you. OK, but an effective CEO understands that and tries to put as much in place to make sure that the communication is as clear and concise as possible. Right. Yeah. Communication is, is definitely important. And mm-hmm. there's different methods of communicating um, mm-hmm. just uh, newsletters or. Uh, text messages, mm-hmm. uh, phone calls, or um, yeah, uh, you know what else? Social media. Social it's just so many yeah. different ways of communicating. Yeah. Uh, now, so you know, you definitely have to utilize uh, all of those sources to um, put your vision yeah. forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So communication, no doubt about it, is is is, is huge. How we communicate it also communicate is also huge. We talk about social media. We talk about text messages. Some of the issues that we have with that. So please be careful because I know we live in a world nowadays where uh, picking up the phone and talking to somebody is almost like that's the last option. Right. If it is even if it is an option. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in today's world, we don't want to pick up the phone. Let me just send you a text. Right. And but the problem with that is that the indirect communication that is missed. OK, because how I feel at that moment determines how I receive your message. Okay. So you could send me a text message or send something through social media and you could be perfectly just saying it with all humility, not trying to cause no problem. Matter of fact, might even have a, you know, might you got a smile on your face. You feeling joyful about it. And next thing you know, that thing will flipped upside down because somebody said, well, why did you say that? Now they get offended by something that you said and you meant no harm by it, but they didn't, get the message. Why? Because they read it instead of hearing it from you or seeing you deliver the message because our body language speaks to it. The tone in our voice speaks to how they're supposed to receive that message. 
Right. There's, you know, definitely different degrees of listening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, listening is deeper than just active listening. Mm -hmm. Active listening active is listening. definitely one. And, um, you know, listening is, um, again, looking at body language, mm -hmm. looking at um, expressions, mm -hmm. looking at um, environment. It's, mm -hmm. it's deeper than just hearing some words that come in your ear. Yes. You yes. Know? So again, we're talking about being an effective CEO. So this is a message for every last one of us. Even though you might not have the brick and mortar building, you might not have a, a big corporation or an LLC or sole proprietorship or, or multi-level marketing, whatever, you're still a CEO because you were called to be a king and queen, which makes you a leader. All right. So let's keep going. Oh, Come on, and I'm sorry. Of course, you know, God has put the kingdom of God in each one of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have... Um, that kingdom in us, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, we're kind of leaders in, yes. our, in our own right yep. in the kingdom of God. You don't know who's watching you. But let's say this. Let's keep going. Number seven. An effective CEO doesn't settle for mediocrity. The company doesn't just affect the CEO. This goes back to, to number one about division. OK, uh, an effective CEO understands it's not just about them. It's not just about the company, because there are other people who are tied to whatever it's going on, whatever they're setting up, whatever business is in place. There is a lot of people that are being affected by the decisions, by the things that are done within whatever that business is. OK, and again, we in first Kings chapter four, read it for yourself. But you got to understand, he Solomon was putting play, things in place because he's trying to make sure that the people are taken care of. OK. And so as a business owner, you got to make sure as the CEO of your own household, you should be making sure that the people in that household are taken care of, that they have what they need. So when they leave out the door, they are prepared as much as they possibly can to handle the foolishness that's outside there. So when they leave, they are well equipped, equipped and they equipped. Why? Because <laughs> they are equipped because you set them up to be equipped. Home matters. You matter. The leader matters. All right, let's keep going. I could spend a lot of time on all of these things, right? But I'm going to keep going for time's sake. We'll keep it moving. Uh, an effective CEO puts things in place for the longevity of the company. I know I've said this before, but uh, please note, everyone will not understand because all they see is right now. So as a leader, you have to understand the people that you're leading. They are not. I, I said this to, to my wife earlier, and I, hopefully I, you can hit, understand what I'm saying. Understand that you're going to be leading people. You trying to help them, but they can't help you help them. Let me say it again. You are trying to help them, but they can't help you help them because their vision is not your vision. Understand that some of the people that you are leading, all they thinking about is the right now. All they can see is right now. They can't see tomorrow. They can't see next week. They can't see two, three, four, five years from now. All they see is right now. And so their actions, their thoughts, the, the decisions that they're making, their motives is about right now. So you're dealing with microwave people, yet you're trying to be the cook that's using an oven. Please understand there is a difference. But you as the CEO, you as the leader have to understand and recognize that's the deal. Understand who you're leading and why they are acting the way they are, why they saying what they saying, why they doing what they're doing. Because all they can see is right now. You, the leader, see down the road. Come on, baby. Oh, no, that's good? it. Okay. And I got one last one. Okay. One last one. An effective CEO also understands that they are human and they will make mistakes. So, yes, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of our God. We're not going to dot every hour. We're not going to cross every T. We're going to come up short in some areas of our lives. Some of the decisions we make are going to might not have been the best move. But as an effective CEO, we recognize that we understand it. And we also say, hey, 
I am sorry. I apologize. They own it. And so then what they do, they don't leave. They don't get up out of Dodge. They fix it or they try to do whatever they can to make it better and make it better, not just for themselves, but for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's about everybody. And that's what we get out of chapter four right here. First Kings chapter four. I wanted to spend a little bit more time on it this week. Hopefully what I have talked about, what we have talked about is something that you get out of this and hopefully it encourages you to continue to not only push forward in what you were called to be, but you also understand that what you are called to be and what you are called to do is not just for you. And a CEO understands they're going to get theirs. You do what you're supposed to do. You do what you're called to do. You are going to get what is due to you. Solomon got what was due to him and got plenty of it. Read it for yourself. He was all right. Let me just say that. Him and his family, all his court, the past, everybody was all right. Simply why? Because he did what he was called to do. He was connected to God and he did what he was called to do and he got blessed like never before. And there's even more that he got that we're going to see later on down the road because it was more for him to do. And you're going to see and read about it. But just understand, we got a lot that we can learn from this thing right here. And we learn it from it. So read this. Please read this. And we apply what we read out of here. And you'll be surprised. Be surprised how blessed you're going to be. As the CEO, you're going to get your blessing. Take care of the folk. He got you. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. We out of here. Come on, baby. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, Please keep me in prayer, too. And my mom in prayer. Yes. Um, my mother-in-law, mama, she's uh, going through a little right now. So we just ask that you do keep her in your prayers, please. Um, and my wife's strength and her sister's, you know, a um, little tough time right now. But we know God is a healer and we trust that he has everything in control. And so just keep, keep, keep. Keep the family in your prayers, okay? So, uh, as we always say, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us, listening with us, uh, sharing with us. Uh, but you continue to be blessed. And as I always tell you, pray, plan, prepare, proceed. Go make it do what it do. We're going to see right. you next week at 630. Take Love care. you. All right. Bye-bye.